want to ensure that our blood cultures are being performed correctly so that our culture results are accurate. Even though we may have done these collections a thousand times, it's important to review the procedures so that we are getting accurate cultures without contamination. Early efforts on our part as we collect blood cultures will lead to time and cost savings to our colleagues down the line. This means paying extra attention to a few specific steps, including patient identification, hand hygiene, site selection and preparation, collection techniques, and labeling. First, just to make sure we're all on the same page, when performing a single blood culture, you will collect blood from two separate sites. At each of these sites, you will collect blood in two bottles, both aerobic and anaerobic bottles. So, for a single blood culture, you will collect a total of four bottles. So, before you go in for your culture, you'll need the basics of your blood collection kit. Sterile alcohol pads, chlorhexidine swabs, two 10 to 20 ml syringes, blood culture bottles, dry gauze, a tourniquet, non-sterile gloves, a blood transfer device, a marker, patient labels, and tape. Also, if you need them, two 10 ml syringes and a butterfly collection set. For each culture that you draw, be sure to select a different body site. Of course, this should not be drawn from an IV unless it's ordered. Use your best judgment on which sites to use, and if you have concerns or difficulty in a particular site, feel free to contact Phlebotomy for assistance. As always, use AIDIT when entering the room. Introduce yourself. Acknowledge that you're in the room to perform a blood culture, and explain what that means. Let them know how long it will take, and when you're done, be sure to thank them. Perform hand hygiene, and be sure to let the patient know that you're washing your hands for their safety. Before you begin, identify your patient with two patient identifiers. Just as in the case of a normal venipuncture, apply your tourniquet for your first collection site and release it while preparing the arm. Sterilization of the collection site is an important step, so here's how we'd like you to approach it. Use a sterile alcohol prep first, moving outward in concentric circles. Then use chlorhexidine. When holding the applicator, don't touch the tip, break the ampule, Saturate the applicator and gently press it to the collection area. Use a back and forth motion for 30 seconds to completely wet the area. Allow the area to completely dry. This is an important one. Don't attempt to blow, fan, blot, or wipe the solution away, as all of these can contaminate the area. Just let it air dry for the best results. As your chlorhexidine is drying, take this time to disinfect your collection bottles. Scrub the tops of the vials with an alcohol prep and leave the prep on top of the bottle until the blood is ready to be injected. As you do all of this preparation, feel free to inform your patient on why we take such extra steps to ensure that the blood cultures we collect are accurate and uncontaminated. They will appreciate your efforts knowing that their results will be as accurate as possible. Okay, now you're ready, so let's move on to actually collecting the samples. Before you begin, be sure to avoid touching the actual puncture site, even with a gloved finger. If it's absolutely necessary to touch the area after it has been cleansed, your fingers will need to be cleaned with chlorhexidine beforehand. If you're using a butterfly collection set, you must carefully monitor the collection volume using the 5 mil marks on the vial label. While we need to collect enough blood, collecting too much can create false positives for the lab work. When using a 20 mil syringe, draw 16 to 20 mils of blood for one culture set. Use a blood transfer device to inoculate each bottle and be sure to hold the syringe plunger to prevent the entire sample from being pushed into a single bottle. First, fill the aerobic vial with 8 to 10 mils and then anaerobic vial with 5 to 7 mils. For testing accuracy, it's essential that we collect the minimal amount of blood for each of the bottles. After collecting, gently invert the blood culture bottle to mix the blood with the preservative 8 to 10 times. To finish, cleanse excess chlorhexidine from the patient with an alcohol swab and maintain sufficient pressure on the puncture site with dry gauze to prevent excess bleeding, then apply a bandage. Now you'll perform the same procedure for your second culture site. Okay, you prepped and performed a sterile and accurate collection. Now you just have one more step to help blood cultures move quickly through the lab. When you label the specimens, each vial must have the patient's name, med rec number, room number, the date and time of the collection, your initials, 
and the site of the collection. Also, remember that UMC's lab is completely automated, allowing rapid processing of blood cultures. So, it's important to place the labels in a position that does not cover the barcodes, as these are the codes that the computer scans as it processes the cultures. Taking that extra two seconds to place a label correctly will keep lab personnel from having to stop the production line and reposition the labels. And in turn, this will keep blood culture turnaround times as short as possible. And that's it. Accurately following the steps of preparation, collection, and labeling will ensure that we are collecting clean and accurate samples for our blood cultures. Again, if you have questions on these policies, contact Nursing Education. And if you need any assistance in blood collection, feel free to contact Phlebotomy.